Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Snacks Online again in lockdowns because everything's going crazy. Everything's going crazy. Everyone's stuck inside. We don't know what to do. Uh, well, I'm so glad you could join us and take a break from driving your parents crazy. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. But as you know, a lot of people at the moment, they're stuck indoors. They don't know what to do with themselves. They only get to go out to go to the shops or, or maybe to go for a run or play some sport. And today I thought, let's have some fun over uh, the internet and let's have some games. Let's do some cool stuff. Let's do a story and let's participate. That means you guys do stuff. I do stuff. We all have fun together. And today we're going to have a bit of fun. And so I encourage you, make sure that you're watching this with your brothers or your sisters so that you can compete with them. Have a bit of fun. Today all you're going to need is uh, a bit of paper because we're going to be doing some stuff with paper. You're going to need maybe some nice dress-ups and maybe some juice or some water. We'll see what happens. So make sure you get that ready. Um, so what we're going to do today is first you might notice that we've got this mystery box right here and this mystery box is full of a mystery and it's going to help us later on with the story but I'm not opening it yet I'm gonna open it at the very end so make sure you stay by it's sealed tight so I'm not gonna open it or anything it's pretty heavy as you can see as so we're gonna be looking at that a bit later but not yet uh, in just a moment we're gonna go see from Spencer Palais and how to make the perfect paper aeroplane. He told us the perfect one. So, Michael, man, you better watch out because this guy knows how to make a good plane. Uh, so, we're going to have a look at that. So, make sure you got your paper ready and also some fingernails. You're going to need some fingernails. So, don't, don't bite them off yet For, from suspense. Spencer and suspenser. See what I did? Okay. And then we're going to come back. We're going to play a game together. It's called the real or fake animal game. It'll be a bit of fun. Uh, then we're going to hear a bit of a lockdown devotion, which is a bit interesting, don't you reckon? Mm, a bit interesting, okay. I'm intrigued. And then uh, we're going to come back and we're going to hear today's story. But before we do any of that, we've had a special kids quest that has been left unanswered for a whole month. And I know there's some people excited to answer that. And uh, on Facebook, we asked you guys, what was the first miracle Jesus performed according to the book of John? If I look at the answers here, Charlie said, turn water into wine. Emma and Alyssa said, turning water into wine. I believe we may have a consensus here. The answer, let's have a look together. And there was a harder question for you older kids, but not all of you heard this question, but Solly put it up there on Facebook a few weeks ago and he asked, if you do know what the first miracle that Jesus performed was, in what chapter in the Bible would you find said miracle? Well, here is the answer. What was the first miracle that Jesus performed according to the book of John? The answer. Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding in a place called Cana. And we can read this story in the book of John chapter well done if you got that correct. Give yourself a pat on the back. And hey, go ask mum and dad for a bit of a lolly or something. Say, hey, mum and dad, Elijah said I could ask you for a, for a prize because Elijah can't give you a prize over the screen. I can try, but I don't know whether you'll be able to actually reach it. So if I like drop something there, you're not really going to get it, are you? But, you know, we'll give it a go. So well done, you girls who got a correct over Facebook. If you got a correct, uh, go ask your mum and dad for a prize. But here, I want you to uh, make sure you got your paper planes ready. Make sure you got your fingernails ready. Because uh, we're about to hear from Spencer on how to make the most perfect paper plane ever. Take it away, Spencer. Hi guys, my name is Spencer Pillay and I'm here to show you how to make the perfect paper plane. So, first... You get this side of the paper and fold it so the lines are just touching and connecting like that. And then, instead of just flattening it, flattening it and going on to the next step, a good thing to do would be to get your fingernail, whatever, your thumbnail, and go like that to make some sharp edges. And that makes the paper plane even better. Second step. 
you see these two? I'm gonna get one, fold it like this, so this line here is connecting with that line there that I folded. Just like that. Simple, right? And I'll do the same as I did before, run my nail over the sides like that. And I'll do exactly the same with this side. There. And you can already see it's starting to look just a little bit like a frame. And a sharp edge. And then, next step, third step. You fold this whole thing over like that. And if you've got the good sharp edges, like I showed you before, no. this will just fold over. Really easy. I don't need some help, look at look. Oh yeah, you're following along really well, Gabriel. Nice one. Now I'm gonna fold some sharp edges. Hang on. Let's see what happens next. Next step is, I'm gonna get one whole wing like this and fold the whole thing over. And I'd prefer to do it this way, it's up to you. You can do it this way or this way. So I go like this. I fold it and the line has to be connecting with this line as you can see. See that? Got it. And perfection. Never forget to do the yeah, sharp yeah. edges guys if you're making one like this. And I'll do the same with this side too. Looking good. So nice. There. And now, just need some extra folds. So, your choice. You can either start off with this side, or you can start off with this side. And this gets to the bit where you need, you really need the sharp edges. So, I prefer to start off with this side here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, watch carefully. I'm gonna lift this wing up, and fold it again. It's a bit weird, I know. You're folding it a lot. Look. Never leave a fold without sharp edges. Nail cross. It's just so good. Do the same with this, and then we've got a perfect plane. Yeah, I've got to get it right. that tip and it's pointy and there we go that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls is the perfect one and now get ready to watch our finished product <laughs> Thank you Spencer, thank you Gabriel, that looked really cool and I tried it out myself and everyone get your paper planes ready because we're all going to throw them together, you ready? Three, a two, a one. Oh, oh no, oh, oh, oh that looked bad, that looked damaging, I'll oh, just ignore that. Oh anyway, let's move on, are you guys ready to play a game? Because now we're going to play a game, we've got a game ready for you. And this game is called Real or Fake Animals. And if you guys know your animals really well, this should be really good for you. But I'm going to get them out. And uh, I'm going to ask you one by one whether it's a real animal or a fake animal. And you can count up your score to see whether you do better than your brother or your sister or your mum and your dad. Are you ready for the first animal? I can't hear you. All right, here we go. Your first animal today. This thing, the zebra-legged, antelope-looking, moose face. Is it real or is it fake? Anyone? If you answered real, correct. Well done, 1.2 for you. Well done, okay. The next animal. One of my personal favorites. Look at this beautiful bird. It's a budgie tiger. Is it real or is it fake? And the answer is, it's fake of course, as if you believe that was real. Of course it's fake. All right, your next one. 
Ooh, a bit tricky. My personal favourite animal on the list. This, is it a real or a fake animal? The answer is real. It's a real animal and it lives deep in the sea and it's got a really weird long name I'll tell it to you later I don't know what it is um, right off the top of my head all right you ready for the next animal it's on the other side it looks like a rabbit with big horns on its head like a stag I believe this is called a jackalope is it real or is it fake drum roll please it is fake as if you'd believe that it a rabbit walks around with antlers like that. Come on. Giant sloth. Wow. Looks a bit scary. You wouldn't want to come across one of these in the woods, would you? Looks like it's as big as a bear. The giant sloth. Is it real or is it fake? Three, two, one. It's real. Or rather, it was real. They're now extinct, but we have fossils of giant sloths. Imagine coming across one of those in the wild wouldn't be very good but it's real all right you ready for our next one this one absolutely adorable but is it real is the question it is some sort of armadillo can you see that it's got a pink back on it it's an armadillo is it real or is it fake it looks so cute though the truth is it is real Believe it or not, these animals do exist. They're called pink fairy armadillos. Who'd want one of those as a pet? I think I wouldn't mind one of those as a pet. It could uh, live in my socks. All right, last two animals. Are you ready? Now, one of these, I, I used to believe these were real and they may still be. Are you ready? Is it real? A pegasus. A horse with wings. Is it real? No. No. Come on. It's not real. It's fake. It's a fake. It's a screenshot. They've put wings on a horse. It's not real. But unicorns, on the other hand, of course. Unicorns are real. Okay. Last, but certainly not the least in the animal kingdom is... This animal. Real or fake? It is called the blobfish... Is it made up of some sort of g gelatin or something? Or is it, in fact, real? Lock in your final answer, for the answer is real. This is the blobfish, and it is a real fish that if you take it out of water, it looks like a big, gloopy mess. And that is the last of our animals. Well done. If you got all of those correct, then you are a brilliant zoologist. Um... Although, it's still up to debate. Maybe the Pegasus does exist. I know some adults out there that would say the Pegasus exists because it is Hobartville's national animal. We're moving on to our next segment. Ah, hi, Strong Nation kids. It's Auntie Min here. Are you ready to learn something new about God's kingdom today? Oh, so good! Let's get into it. We all know how important it is to wash our hands and keep them clean before we eat. Yep, wash those yucky germs away. Ugh. How about your sparkling clean teeth? Do you brush and floss your teeth every day? And how about your bedrooms? Do you try to keep them nice and tidy? Sorry mum about the Lego that got stuck in your foot. I was wondering, Strong Nation kids, if we know how to keep the outside of our bodies clean, how do we keep the insides clean, like our heart and our mind, the things we talk and the things we think about? How do we do that? I'll tell you how. In God's word, King David prayed, create a clean heart within me, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. What does this mean? It means this, kids, that God is the only one who has the power to create a clean heart within us. We can't do it on our own because of our sin. When you're feeling a bit yuck or lonely or confused or scared or angry or ugh, just ugh, not good, this is when you come to God and you go, God, 
help me. I want to feel a smile on the inside of my tummy, not a frown or not yelling and not being frustrated or upset. I want you, God, to help me get through this. And so when we do that, it's like cleaning on the inside. God, come, come and do a work in me. Today, I'm going to teach you two steps in how we let God come on the inside and keep us clean and renewed in Him and His Spirit and His love and His truth. Are you ready, Strong Nation Kids? Can you say, step one? Good. Okay, step one is read your Bible, God's holy and living word. You may have a Bible that looks like this. It may have pictures in it. It may have words in it. It has lots of amazing stories about people and about God. Or you have, may have a Bible that looks more like this. It doesn't have any pictures. All of God's word is good. And when we read it, it points us in the right direction and it helps wash and cleanse our mind. Isn't that amazing? It's so amazing. Isn't God good? Can you say, step two? Awesome. Okay, step two is talk to God as much and 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 as much as as much as much as you can. It doesn't matter where you are, you can always pray and always talk to God. It's okay if you're a bit shy, you don't have to pray out loud. You can pray in your mind and talk to God even when you're in bed by yourself. What's amazing is that God always hears our prayers and he's always ready to hear how he can help us. Well, Strong Nation kids, I hope you learned something new today about how we let God keep us clean on the inside because that's really, really important. I'll see you next time. It's bye now for Mighty Men. Bye. And now is the time that you've long been waiting for. The mystery box is here, the poncho is off, and it's time to find out what's inside. Are you ready for this? Let's go put it right in the middle. Are we going to open it first? Alright, are you ready? Time to open up the mystery box, find out the secrets to the universe and the secrets to what Elijah's largest plan for, for us. Okay, you ready? It's opening. Oh, it's not quite. Oh, there we are. Okay. Intriguing. All right. This is what we have. We have a bunch of paper. No. Oh, okay. We got something inside. All right. Here is where our costumes come in handy. All right. Firstly, we've got this beautiful flower here. So if you've got some flowers, maybe you can put a flower up. Some, oh, actually, it broke. Never mind that. We're leaving that down there. All right, we've got a, an awesome hat. A fancy hat. Oh, yes, some suspenders. Some suspenders. We'll put the suspenders on. They're on, my suspenders are on. They've just come off, but that's all right. And, oh, here, bow tie. That's it. All right, we've got some fancy dress ups. All right, this is what I want you to do. If you're at home, go find some dress ups. Some fancy dress ups. If, if you need to go raid your dad's tie closet, go get a tie or a bow tie, um, or a fancy flower or a fancy hat to put in your hair. You can pause the video, go do that. It's very important. Go get dressed up. Go, go, go. All right. Your time is now you made up. All right, what else have we got here? Okay. Ooh, we've got an awesome Star Wars cup. It's a Stormtrooper. Very cool. A little bit dirty. I just. Clean it out a little bit. Awesome. All right, if you're at home, go get yourself a cup, okay? Put some water or some juice in it. Go get it. All right, what else we got in here? Oh, ah, it's a snake. It's rubber. Okay, we're going to flick it over there. We don't need that. What else have we got? All right, more paper. Oh, this is cool. All right, this is cool. Have you guys ever seen one of these before? It is a coconut instrument. It's part coconut. That's not all we got. We also got a little shaker thing. So we can have like a real band here. Yeah, I wrote that myself. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Great. Oh, yes. 
Now this is where it gets exciting. I got one of these poppers. You know what happens when you pull these apart? One of these Christmas ones. You ready? Block your ears! Didn't even pop. Are you ready? We'll do it for real. Ah! Okay. It's popped. We'll see what we got inside. You ready for this? We don't need the rubbish. We got a little spin top. You want me to spin it? Here we go. Oh, that was a bit, uh, a bit boring. Oh, it's spinning. That's cool. Awesome. We got another party hat. Well, what's the harm in two party hats? Go get another hat. If you got another hat, just put two hats on. Two party hats. Awesome. And where's my joke? Oh, here's my joke. You guys want to hear a joke? It's a Christmas one, so it's a bit outdated. Although it's now July, so we're, we can justify it. Alright. What do you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Tensilitis! Don't eat Christmas decorations. It would be very uncomfortable. Oh, this is cool. Oh, I've always wanted one of these. This is one of those awesome um, super soaker water guns. You put it in water, and you suck it up, and you just squirt people. It's pretty cool. I don't need it today. Um, oh, and the last thing we got in here. It's a camouflage Bible. Oh, can you see it? Are you sure? It's camouflaged. It's invisible. No, it's not. It's quite visible but it's really cool it's got like an army thing on the front and I suppose having a camouflage Bible means that you can read it when no one can see all this is actually gonna help us tell the story today and so if you guys remember the kids quest today is about Jesus turning water into wine and I'm gonna to talk to you about the lead up to that and how this happened and so if you remember where do we find this in the Bible we got two Bibles. Which Bible will find it first? John chapter 2. I got it in this Bible. Jesus at the wedding in Cana. It says, Three days later, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was at a wedding feast in the village of Cana in Galilee. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited and went there too. Well, in, in this wedding, they had wine. And today, I don't have wine. But I got some beautiful grape juice. Would you like some? All right. Here you go. Ready? Oh, joking. It's got the seal on it. I wasn't about to destroy my camera. Okay. We're going to pour us some uh, grape juice because I like grape juice a lot. And break the seal. My stormtrooper cap. It's got another stormtrooper in the other side. Cool Star Wars guy with a gun. Okay. Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. Quick, quick. All right, that's all right. It's fine. I stopped. I realized I couldn't actually hear you through the camera. Okay. So we got a full cup of juice, as you can see there. And so in the wedding, they had some nice wine. Because it was customary at the time to have lots of wine uh, and to have some nice wine for your guests. Now, obviously, kids, we don't drink wine. We drink juice. Juice is way better. But they drank wine, and so uh, they were drinking lots of wine, and, and eventually, through the party, they drank all of the wine. Oh, I've never been so full of juice. They drank up all the wine. And it got embarrassing for the hosts of the wedding. You see, if they ran out of wine and the wedding was still running, what must people think of them? They must be poor. Or they must be stingy. Or they must be greedy. And so they thought, well, well, what are we going to do? We are out of wine and we do not want to embarrass our hosts. When the wine was all gone, Mary said to Jesus, Jesus, they haven't got any more wine. What are we going to do? Can you make some more wine? And Jesus replied to his mother, Mother, my time has not yet come. 
You must not tell me to do what is not the right time to do. And Mary then said to the servants, just ignoring what Jesus said almost, she said, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. And so the servants went off with Jesus. And so Jesus got the servants to get these six massive jars. They're so big. They're 100 litres each and they're made of stone. It's a really hard stone, right? So they're as big as a bathtub. You can imagine a bathtub full of water. Well, there's six of those. And Jesus tells them, fill up every single bathtub to the brim. And so they did. They filled them up. Filled them up to the very top and these bathtubs were over flowing and then Jesus said go take a cup of this water to the person who's in charge of the wedding feast and so exactly what they did they scooped up some water I'm just gonna hide it back here you're not gonna be able to see just pretend there's water all right I'm not Jesus I can't do miracles okay they brought the master of the wine some water. And when the master tasted it, oh, that's some good wine right there. That's what the master might have sounded like. When he began to drink, the water wasn't water. The wine was wine. And the wine tasted really good. So good, in fact, that the master got up in front of everybody and ask for the, the groom of the wedding to come up come on come over here come on and they got up and and he said to everyone i've been to a lot of weddings all right and at the wedding they normally they bring out the good wine at the beginning and then they bring out the bad wine at the end but today this groom has brought out the very best wine the very best wine you've ever drank Oh, I just spilled it on the Bible. I'm so sorry, Bible. Oh, no. Oh, well. And he said to them, This young man has brought out the very best wine. Last. And this was a very honourable thing for him to do. And so, Jesus had saved the day at the wedding. And also... He'd done a miracle which began his whole ministry and it says at the bottom there that this was the first of Jesus miracles and he did it in a village called Cana and there Jesus showed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him and after this everything starts to heat up for Jesus he starts to do some more incredible miracles to show people who he truly is. To show them that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. And it leads one day to Jesus being put on the cross. Because some people did not like what Jesus had to say and what Jesus had to do. And so Jesus doing this one miracle was the beginning of something very big. What can we learn from this story? Well, it's pretty simple. Jesus is amazing. Jesus is the only one that could ever do something like this. Because he's God. He was able to turn the water to the wine because he has power over water and over all wine. He is miraculous. He can do anything. And he's the creator. This is Jesus who walked as a man who had a mother here on earth. And he was the son of God. And we can trust in God to be our provider for everything we need. Just like the groom at the wedding could trust that Jesus was able to make more wine when they needed it. And Jesus tells us to pray. Give us today our daily bread. To ask God to give us the things that we need. And every day I encourage you to pray God for the things that you need. During this really hard time of lockdown... You can might feel, man, I'm going to run out of food. I'm going to run out of fun. I'm going to run out of friends. But we can actually have trust in Jesus that he will provide for us. And we just have to believe in him and 
sometimes ask him, and he is sure to be faithful because he is all powerful. So that's our story today. Awesome. Cheers. Don't spill it. <sighs> all right. Well, there was one last thing that I've got to show you guys, and it is for next month. Next month's Kids Quest. Let me get right back to you. Our next Kids Quest for the month of July, we will be asking you in the first week of August. It's a double question, a double whammy. Are you ready for this? I know you smart kids over there are going to already be getting your minds on and ready to think about this. And if you get it correct, you can get a prize from yours truly. Or Solly, if you see him up there at Mountains, or Sarah and Brody at Penrith. All right, here are the two questions. And they are both about the woman at the well. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, what did he say he could give her? And the second question, what does it mean that Jesus was the Messiah? That's all from us today, kids. Now, I hope you have a great day. And why don't you join your mum and dad for praise and worship this Sunday morning. And uh, make sure you go easy on your mum and dad. Why don't you help around the house, do something nice for them. But let's not forget to ask God for the things that we need. For he is always sure to provide. See you, everybody.